Okay, this video is going to come with some homework. After you're done watching, I need you to go read Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. Fantastic book. And then watch the stream I did on it. Write that down. Friends. My name is Brianna Bond, otherwise known as No Ordinary Scholar, and today we are talking about the best book this planet has to fucking offer, Lost in the Neverwoods. If you want to hear me gush and rave and just <laughs> about this book, that's why, that's why your homework was to watch the stream. Today we are talking about a very specific thing that I feel is a trope in a lot of things and it needs to not be. Like, I don't hate that is used as a trope. I hate that this is like a thing that people actually do and say and stuff. Like I feel like the existence of this situation in reality is a problem. Also side note, if you don't know where this jacket is from, why aren't you subscribed to my vlog channel? Bro, catch up. But let me give you a quick breakdown. So Lost in the Neverwoods is a Peter Pan retelling and general summary, is Wendy and her two brothers, John and Michael, disappeared one day five years prior to the events of this book. And she has no memory of what's happened, but her brothers never made it back. She was the only one that made it back. Now, five years later, kids are starting to disappear around town and she is being put under a lot of pressure. She's being watched a lot because people are thinking that maybe the dots are connected. She ends up running into this dude named Peter Pan, who she thought was just a fictional character, but turns out he really is the boy that's never supposed to grow up. But things are going wrong and they have to try and fix it, hopefully by rediscovering a lot of her memories from that time. Now, obviously, Peter Pan's fucking involved. Obviously, the situation has something to do with the fantastical. And you get put in this situation where both Peter and her are able to talk about it. She's not able to talk about it with other people because, you know, people wouldn't believe her. People would think she's crazy. But you also get to a position where she and Peter are able to talk about her brothers in a way she can't talk about with anyone else. And some of it is in a way that she should be able to talk with anyone else, but for one reason or another, just other people are not able to do that with her. So she and Peter have been bonding. The woods seem like it's really connected to the, everyone's disappearances, so they've been disappearing into the woods, and her friend catches them coming out of the woods and says, I'm your best friend. You used to say that I'm the only person you felt like you could rely on, remember? And now you're what? Going into the woods with some guy you just met? Wendy, you're terrified of the woods. Well, Jordan, Jordan being the friend, I have several issues with your attitude right now. I think that's something people really need to understand is We've all been taught that people that have like a chronic illness, a disability, stuff like that, they're just like you and me. The world is exactly the same, but with one or two differences. Like maybe they see the world exactly as you and I do, but they just can't walk. They see the world exactly as you and I do, but they're just a little sadder all the time. That's completely inaccurate. And I, I was actually discussing this a lot online with some other people in some communities, and it's an attempt at humanizing the disabled, but the disabled are not the ones dehumanizing disabled people. It's something that people really need to get through their heads. Talking about illnesses, disabilities, traumas, it is literally like trying to have a solid conversation with someone that speaks a language you do not understand. It is so exhausting to try and break down every like instance of emotion to someone else so that way it can bridge that gap in communication and bridge that gap in experience and in understanding. It is very, very exhausting task and it is one that doesn't go away. When you have a chronic illness, when you have a disability and that is your, like that changes your whole perspective on life, that changes ex all the way. That, Jesus, I'm not that popular. That changes how you view life, how you interact with things in life, how you put pieces together to try and make your way through the day. All of those things are changed, so trying to bridge that gap to other people who do not understand is a monumental task. 
It is also something that can make it harder to bond with people in certain ways. This is a scientific understood thing too. According to the Association for Psychological Science, pain brings people together. Shared pain brings people together. It is what they refer to as social glue. There was an experiment done where they took people, put the, had them put their hands in a bucket of water to get a like metal ball out of the water. Some people had room temperature water. Some people had fuck you, this water is going to hurt you water. And people bonded over the experience of having done a similar thing, but the people that had the painful water bonded more from that experience. So taking that with the understanding that talking and just interacting about your life with people who do not have similar experiences feels like speaking to someone who does not speak the same language. It can be very easy to bond to people that do speak that same language as you, that do understand what you're going through. It can be so relieving to see that and to be able to feel like that's normal, like there's someone that makes you feel normal, that doesn't make you feel like there's something wrong with you or your life. Big examples for me are, let's let's talk Marvel, Bucky Barnes. I am absolutely in love, like in love, like second husband kind of love with James Buchanan Barnes. I have no real interest in Sebastian Stan and that is because experiences Bucky's gone through, like it would it is an extremely relieving experience to talk to someone who understands PTSD and flashbacks and stuff and they just get it and they just understand and they know how it feels. That is something that is drawing me to this character as well as like his charm, his jackass attitude. I love him. But it's primarily the fact that like a major thing that makes me feel like I could actually be around him and be able to talk and communicate with him is the fact that when I spring up these types of things which are a major part of my life, I don't have to worry about having to break it down piece by piece. I don't have to worry about judgment, shame, any of that because they get it. Another example is Wanda Maximoff in WandaVision. I suffer from disassociative episodes and to see that be represented in a way that like I was, I've not been able to relate to something in my reality in that way ever. So I have such a special place in my heart for the show WandaVision because of that. But even if we do not talk about like the specifics of knowing the trauma and like pain and stuff like that, even if we ignore that, it's also about being able to talk freely about the subject. In this book, Wendy does not feel like she can talk about her brothers in any capacity to anyone because they start giving her pity looks. They start like, I don't, let's not talk about it so you don't have to think about it. But Peter is able to view them and, and the time that they had together in a different way. He's able to tell her, as she still can't remember, tell her stories of them like running around Neverland. And she's able to tell him about just what her brothers were like before all that. And that's, she says, this is, not says, but like the book says that this is the first time she's able to freely talk about the good times she's had with her brother in five years. If you as a friend cannot provide that to her, that is also a problem. If you cannot be someone, that's another thing I feel is such a big issue, especially like from my perspective with mental health, is people do not want to bring up the issue because they don't know how to interact with it. So you don't know what's appropriate for me to interact with it as opposed to listening to me, allowing me to interact with it how I feel is right, appropriate, and comfortable for me, and then being able to jump off from there. I feel so many, ah, uh, ah. Uh, but so many people who do not understand these types of things, they want to be able to tell me how I'm allowed to interact with certain topics and certain ideas that might be triggering. This is also the issue with the trigger warnings. Like people want to be able to tell me what is triggering, what is going to be good and bad for me to discuss. They want to know for me as opposed to listening to me say what I need. And this is this shows that Jordan has not been listening to Wendy and allowing Wendy to talk about these things that would, that she wants to talk about. She wants to talk about her brothers as the happy brothers and the happy loving brothers she had as opposed to bring them up and like try and bring them up in that contest and 
everyone else forcing her to remember and think of them in the context of their disappearance. Did that make sense? And maybe that's how the only way they can view it. Maybe that's the only way that they can view her viewing it. The issue of people not thinking if you're depressed or suicidal, you shouldn't be making jokes about depression or suicide because it's serious. But that's a chronic thing that I'm constantly dealing with. If I'm only allowed to look at it through doom and gloom, and that's an active, constant part of my life, how am I supposed to get better? How am I supposed to get happy? It, it Make it make sense. And I do wanna be very clear, this is not about looking on the bright side. It is the idea that traumatic situations evoke so many emotions and there's so many stages of dealing with trauma. I have trauma that I've been dealing with my whole life. There are times when it gets worse, there are times when I'm fine. It evokes so many emotions. And it's important to let people explore those in the way that they need. Especially when you see like the stereotype that comedians are all depressed. That's another way trauma can present itself. That is another way that people can try and cope with the trauma. We have to allow room for that. But a lot of people just don't understand mental health the way it needs to be understood. They understand mental health as being way less complex than it actually is. Before we go, I do want to touch on one thing that does really bother me about this whole situation. It is the fact that this whole conflict is an extremely selfish thing. It is so selfish, and especially because you have her say, like, remember when I was the only person you could rely on, now you're out there fighting your fears with this dude you just met? It's so selfish. I understand. Everyone's put a lot of effort into this relationship, right? I understand that, but time does not equal understanding. Just because you've spent, like, you've always been friends, just because you were there for her for the five years, does not mean you have the skills, the, not, the understanding to provide to her something that is necessarily helping her get through the situation. Or maybe you are helping her get through, but this other person is able to provide something that is helping more. It is, it bamboozles me. It truly bamboozles me. Other people I have experiences I have that you don't have. And so we are able to talk about that experience and like work through that experience in ways that you can't not do with me. It is so selfish to feel like just because you have spent so much time with person. I understand we all, there is that ingrained belief in humans to believe that just like if you put in time and effort, you'll get the reward. But if to, to be upset that she's making progress but not making progress with you is truly one of the most selfish um, like emotional conflicts I ever see in books in people and I frankly think we need that to stop thank you so much for watching again go watch my stream read this book so we can bond over how absolutely fantastic this book is oh my god if you liked what you saw and you want to see more subscribe here subscribe at my vlog channel you got a little extra change in your pocket go check out my patreon over there if you subscribe for five dollars a month you get early access to all my videos you get the notes to my reading stream so you would get the like 10 pages of notes i put on this book you get all of that you get all of that you would also get because obviously you're a big fan of the Queen of Thieves series, which these two books are available on Amazon.com right now. You would get a lot of early access to like book covers. You get to see some early chapters as well. With that $5 subscription, you get access to the pre-release premieres of the whole book on Patreon. If any of that sounds interesting to you, go check it out. Link is down below. But until next time, Valedictions, friends.